Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to talk to you about our brand new expression data type. The expression data type is a flexible data type that is used to parse an inline syntax pretty much anywhere in the product. So basically what that means is you can now write an expression inside of pretty much any value box inside of Xano. This expression could contain mathematical operators. It can reference your inputs and variables. You can perform logical or conditional operations all inside of a single expression. You can consider it an alternative to chaining multiple functions and filters together. Let's hop over to Xano and I'll show you some examples. So here we are in Xano. I have a very simple function stack here. We just have a single input of score. We are creating a variable with the contents of that input and then returning it in the response. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a score value of 50. And when we run this, we get 50. Now let's say I want to add to this. Typically the way we would do that is we would add a filter called add and we would go ahead and supply our second value. I'm gonna go ahead and supply 100. So that means that when we run this again, we end up with 150 as expected. Now with the new expression data type, what this allows us to do is instead of clicking and applying this filter and then adding the value in the filter settings panel here, we can get rid of this and we can use our new expression syntax to just type this all in the value box instead. So as an example, if we were going to reference an input, we would start with dollar sign input dot score. So this just represents that we want to reference an input and then score is the name of our input. And then all we have to do is type in plus 100. Make sure the expression data type is chosen in the dropdown. We'll go ahead and save that. And when we run this again, you can see we still get that same 150 result. And we did that without having to utilize a filter to do that. And we of course have the ability to chain multiple mathematical operations in the same expression. So we can do minus 50 and plus three. We'll go ahead and save and run this again and we get 103. We can also do concatenation inside of the expression. So let's say we want this to have the word score inside of it. So what I can do here is I can close this and I can type score. And then we would add a filter. That filter is called concat. And our value is going to be our input and we'll go ahead and put a space separator there. So we'll go ahead and save and run this and you can see we get score 50. Now to do this in an expression instead, we would just type in score. We'll add a tilde in our space and then another tilde and then we'll do input.score. So the tilde just represents a concat filter is basically how you can think about that. So we'll go ahead and save and run this again and we get score 50 as expected. We of course have the ability to combine this with mathematical operations. So if I wanted to subtract 25 from the score, I can do that. Save and rerun, and now we get score 25. Let's say we wanted to compare two values to see if they are equal. How would we do that right now? So let's go ahead and select our input here. We're gonna add a filter called equals and we'll set our value to 50. So we're just checking to see if score equals 50 and we are returned to true because 50 equals 50. We can do this in an expression by using a comparison operator. So that would be dollar sign input dot score equals 50. Choose our expression data type and save. And when we run this again, we get a true. If we apply a different value for score and run it again, we are returned false. You of course have access to all of these standard comparison operators. So we have type matching equals, we have not equals to, greater than, less than, and so on. Now we're gonna get a little bit more advanced and we're gonna talk about logical and conditional operators. So let's say we want to check to see if our score is between two numbers, let's say 10 and 100. How would we do that in the function stack? We would start by adding a conditional statement in our expression, we'll say we want to check to see if score is greater than 10 and score is less than 100. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now let's determine what our function is going to do based on that result. Let's just say I want to create a variable and we'll just set the value as true. So if the score falls between this range, this will return true. If it doesn't, it will return false. 
There we go. So we'll go ahead and save that. Let's send a score of 50, and you can see we get a true. We'll send a score of 500, and we get a false. Now, if we wanted to do this as an expression instead, we would just reference our input. We'll do dollar sign input dot score is greater than 10. We'll type our and operator, and then we'll do input dot score is less than 100. We'll go ahead and save that, and let's disable our conditional here. We'll change our return. We'll run this again. We get a false change the score to 50, and we get a true. So by using the expression, we've done this all in one single step in the function stack, super simple. Right now, we're just returning true and false because that's what happens if we just write this expression as it stands. But what if we want to control what is returned based on the result? Well, all we would have to do is just add a question mark and supply the values that we want returned instead. So I'm gonna say I want yes and no. So if this is true, yes will be returned. If this is not true, no will be returned. So we'll save that. Let's send a score of 50. We are returned yes. If we send a score of 500, we are returned a no. Of course, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to run through every single operator that we have available in the expression. We do have them all listed in our documentation for you. One of the really cool things about the expression data type is the ability to add filters to your expressions. So remember a little bit ago when we were looking at the mathematical filters? So if I wanted to add 10 to my score, I can just do plus 10. That works fine. If we wanted to use the add filter instead, we can just add a pipe character and type in add 10. We'll save and run, and we get 510. Any of the filters that we have available in Xano today are available to be used in the expression data type. We can, of course, chain multiple filters together, so we'll go ahead and add 10 more, and we get 520. We also have different operators available for working with objects and arrays. Let's talk about the spread operator. So the spread operator essentially allows you to spread a set of values across an object or an array. So let's go ahead and start building an object here in the expression builder. So we have A equals one, V is two, and now we'll go ahead and insert our spread operator and we'll insert another object here. We'll do C is three and we'll close that up. We'll choose the expression data type, save and run. And you can see we now have A, B, and C all as one object. The possibilities of what you can do in an expression are almost limitless when you combine them with the vast array of operators that we have available, as well as all of the filters inside of Xano. You can do some really cool stuff really quickly. Of course, I'm not gonna leave you hanging without showing you some real world examples, so let's take a deeper look. So in this API, I am calling an external API and getting a list of customer data. So it has a customer ID, a list of purchase values, where they're located, and when they were last seen. I want to use this API to determine whether or not a specific customer is considered a high value customer or a low value customer. The criteria we're using to determine that is the customer's location, the amount of purchases that they have made, and finally, the total value of the purchases that they've made. So first, let's take a look and see what this looks like in a normal function stack. So we'll go ahead and just run this. Let's go ahead and provide customer ID number 32. And when we run this, we get a return of low value customer, but let's go over to the debugger and let's take a look and see exactly what this is doing. So we first have the external API request that returns all of our customer data. We then use an array find first element function to look for the customer ID that we're providing in the input. And then finally, we have a conditional statement. And this conditional statement is what's doing all of the heavy lifting here. The expression that we built in our conditional statement first takes a look at the customer location and checks to see if it is USA. And then we have an and group where customer purchase history, so we're looking at the count of the purchase history, so that's just the number of purchases that they've made. We want to look to see if that is greater than 10, and we want to look at the sum of that array because that array is the value of each purchase, is greater than 5,000. 
So we're using multiple expressions in our condition, and we're also applying filters to those to make this work as expected. So if the customer is determined high value, then we just uh, create a variable that says high value customer. If they're not, we create a variable that says low value customer. So customer 32 is a low value customer. We'll go ahead and do customer 34, who is a high value customer. Now, how would we do this using the expression data type instead? So we do still need that array find first element function, but once we have that object in our expression, we're first checking the customer found variable, and we are looking at the customer location key to make sure that equals USA. We then use the AND operator to check if the purchase history count is greater than 10. And then we can even have a second AND operator to check to see if the sum of the purchase history is greater than 5,000. Our question mark essentially just indicates an if then statement. So if this is true, we return high value customer. If it's false, then we return low value customer. So we've done all that without having to build out this conditional or anything. We can just do it all in one shot. Let's go ahead and test it out. We'll do customer 32, and that returns low value customer. And finally, customer 34 returns high value customer. I hope this helps get you started using our brand new expression data type. We're so excited to see how you use it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on the Zano community at community.zano.com or via support chat inside of Zano. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.